Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Hunter from Mount Nash Photography. Join me tonight as we're going up close and personal with a wonderful deep sky target located in the constellation of Cepheus. And it's the first time I'm actually getting very close up to this object. Tonight, we're gonna to be going after the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Yeah, it's been a little bit since I've done a video last because, well, spring has been very unforgiving for us here in the eastern United States. We've had, you know, in the month of May, I've maybe imaged one time in that entire month because it was just filled with rain and cold temperatures. Like, we were about 30 degrees below average and we just could not catch a break whatsoever. But now that today, uh, filming this video on June 2nd, we actually have some summer light temperatures. But there is one problem. When we finally have some clear skies, if you kind of look behind me, it's a little bit hazy because our old friends from Canada has brought the wildfire smoke back to the region. So can't win, can we? Besides me complaining about the awful weather, but I really wanted to hone on in this target in particular because I have imaged the Elephant Trunk Nebula many times before, but I've always captured the entire emission nebula structure around, including the Garnet Star, but I've never really took the approach of really zooming in to the elephant trunk because I really didn't have anything that could get in nice and close until I have my Newtonian uh, telescope now I, that I use for imaging and combined with a small crop sensor with the 5A5, we're going to get a really close up and personal shot of the elephant trunk and doing it the, for the first time in monochrome uh, like imaging wise, this should be a really nice treat. I'm hoping that the smoke doesn't really hinder too much of the image itself. I'm hoping to get away with it from using just narrowband data because I've imaged in really really bad uh, wildfire smoke before using uh, my refractor and a three nanometer bandpass uh, filter doing the dumbbell and it actually turned out pretty good even though I could barely see any stars so hopefully fingers crossed that we get the same results for something like this but with a whole lot of detail. Now I have been really enjoying this new Newtonian telescope setup because not only am I getting a little bit more light gathering with having a six inch mirror, but also the ridiculously fast focal ratio with this being 3.5 probably one of the fastest, you know, largest scopes that I own besides my rocket on that can do down to F2, but with only an objective lens at about 77 millimeters or so, this is an extreme light bucket. And then combined with the 5A5 sensor, we can really get up close and personal with, you know, a lot of galaxies, planetary nebulas, and, you know, targets just like this. So as you can see, I am still using the stock focuser on here. I know I talked about last time in the previous video that I was getting an upgraded uh, focuser for this, especially if I wanna use my 2600 and a two inch filter wheel. It just adds a lot more weight. I do have it right here, the CYCK um, focuser here, but I've ran into some problems, unfortunately. So I had this fully installed, perfectly on here, ready to go. And then one of the nights, uh, I would say about two nights ago, when we had just some thick wildfire smoke, I just wanted to, you know, get some tests and make sure everything was okay. But the problem I had was I could not achieve focus with this uh, focuser here. And usually, you know, not being able to achieve focus, you can always add some extensions to, you know, be able to have enough, you know, outward focus to achieve, you know, what you're looking for. But I had the opposite problem, and this is a very common thing that happens with Newtonian telescopes, is I did not have enough in-travel. 
And I mean just barely. I probably would have needed like another like 10 millimeters of focus. It was extremely close, but I could not get it done. So unfortunately, I waited almost three weeks to get this to arrive at my doorstep from AliExpress. And then now I can't even use it. So uh, unfortunately, it's going to have to go back and I'm going to have to look for something else. So if anyone happens to have any, you know, suggestions that a uh, a nice upgraded focuser would work for the Skywatcher 150p Quattro, please let me know down in the comments because I'd be really interested to upgrade this. But for now, we're going to continue to keep using the stock focuser. So for tonight, I am going to be using, of course, the Skywatcher Quattro 150p, which is a six inch Newtonian telescope with a focal length of 600 millimeters with an F ratio of 3.5. So extremely fast light bucket in the camera of choice. I'm gonna be using the ZWO ASI 585mm Pro, which is a monochrome camera. Inside of the filter wheel here, I'm gonna be using three separate filters, one for hydrogen alpha, one for sulfur two, and one for oxygen three, from the company of Antlia, the Antlia Edge, which has a 4.5 nanometer bandpass uh, filter, which does very well, especially in my Bortle 4 to Bortle 5 skies. And controlling everything is going to be the ZWO AM5, wonderful mount, definitely been my absolute favorite mount I've ever owned so far. Uh, I did upgrade the guide scope though. I am using an SB Bunny 40 millimeter guide scope, which brings it down to like 160 millimeters for you know focal length. I just needed a little bit more punch to it. I did use an off-axis guider, but I was always having some problems trying to find guide stars. It's just a pain in the butt. So I'm not using ridiculous amounts of focal length, like over a thousand anyway. So uh, 40 millimeter, 160 should do the job just fine. Controlling everything back here on top of the telescope is a ZWO ASI Air Plus, which is controlled through smartphone and my computer. And yeah, let's go ahead and wait for nightfall. Hopefully the uh, smoke isn't gonna be too bad tonight and we can get a decent image just out of one night. In fact, we're probably gonna be having several nights of clear skies ahead, but really depends on how bad this Canadian smoke is. So we're gonna wait until nightfall, go ahead and set everything up with our image sequence and we'll get this show on the road. All right, now from the timing of this recording here, this is actually night two of imaging this one target uh the other night before i had a little bit of some run-in of some row clouds for like an hour and a half and it caused me to lose a little bit of some exposure time but i have roughly about almost five six hours between hydrogen alpha sulfur two and oxygen three now the smoke is a little bit heavier tonight so we're just going to go ahead and take our chances i'm also going to be shooting a little bit of some rgb as far as the star color wise because i'm not a big fan of like narrowband uh star color it just looks really dull just you know the full color just adds a nice little touch to the final image so in the imaging sequence here I have everything already set up. I want to show you the sky atlas of where I'm going to be shooting at. And this is going to be the framing I'm looking for. And it's going to be kind of like a vertical shot of this target, but it's nice and very close up. So we should be getting a lot of very, very nice detail with this. And as far as, you know, the sequence goes, I'm going to be starting off with hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. Those are the two bands I want to get a little bit more of i got a decent amount of sulfur right now but i'm just going to be focusing more on those and then a little bit later on the night when it rises up a bit higher i'm going to be doing a little bit of like one hour of some rgb for just the stars and then throwing it right back to hydrogen alpha oxygen three and then sulfur two so we're going to go ahead and let this run i was doing uh a globular cluster as well tonight just kind of guiding the you know gauging what the skies are like and it's actually not too terribly bad so we're gonna go ahead wait for the first uh exposure to come in and we're gonna see what we're looking at all right here is the first exposure of the hydrogen alpha and it's about what i expected it would look like being with the wildfire smoke right now but you can definitely see the trunk is uh pretty well visible if we do a little bit of some, you know, darkening here and it looks great. We got, you know, the intricate 
trunk structure here. It is horizontal, which will fix that in post-processing, stack it up vertical to what it's normally presented as. But looking at everything, so far, so good. Definitely have a little bit better data from last night, but we're just going to take our chances and let it run through the course of tonight. I'm going to go ahead and stack the data, and the next time you see me, we will be in PixInsight editing the final result. Now, I've went ahead and already gone through the stacking process for uh, the past two nights, and I got roughly about 10 hours of data combined between all the Naraban and was able to get about an hour's worth of RGB just for the stars. And just as I expected, yeah, the smoke definitely had some impact for this, but we still ended up with a relatively great image. And we're going to first look at the hydrogen alpha here. We got some great detail and modulation here of the nebulous gas reaching up all the way. And for the orientation of this right now, it is sideways. But when I went further down in the processing, I orientated it basically straight up. So it kind of looks, you know, like a familiar face. But still, right out of the stack, this is great, even with the very thick uh, wildfire smoke in the region. So hydrogen alpha, I already knew this region was going to be very strong in this band pass, uh, followed by the oxygen three. Now, I was dealing with a first quarter moon and with the smoke, so oxygen in itself wasn't very strong with this uh, set of images here, which I got about three hours worth of oxygen data, and you can kind of see it around the actual elephant trunk itself. What actually surprised me the most was the sulfur data. Sulfur data came out really good. We got some great details in with the overall structure. And even by the uh, the trunk of the elephant trunk nebula, we got some great detail all around, which, you know, combined them together looked fairly nice. And then, of course, our color channels only got like half hour of most on the blue channel and you don't really see much of anything it's just for the stars uh same for the green channel didn't really see much in the way of this either but what actually surprised me with only about 20 minutes of the red channel i actually was starting to capture a little bit of the elephant trunk nebula in itself even just with 20 minutes of data so this would have been kind of interesting if i just kind of did this as like an ha uh, rgb and see what that kind of looked like. But i never actually fully done this in full color stars and full Naraban. And going through all the processes, I just basically skipped over through that. I do have a nice guide here on the channel. In fact, it is a playlist that I'm starting up. It's for monochrome imaging uh, processing tips. You'll be, I'll be able to link that uh, down in the description. And it'll be a little bit of a uh, pop-up at the top to be able to follow that through. So combining all together with the RGB stars, hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen, this is what we ended up with. And I'm definitely, you know, I'm happy with this image overall. Now with it being vertical, you can see we got some brilliant structure here, especially right near the trunk itself. And I didn't quite get the, uh, the little two galaxies that were in the eye of the trunk here. Unfortunately, I don't have the focal length for something like this, but I'm really enjoying the color of this overall. Now, I know green sometimes in HA, uh, SHO is frowned upon, but I've always been a fan of like the rainbow SHO, just to kind of show all colors aspects. We got some great hydrogen detail and sulfur detail around the bottom of the trunk itself. And the stars coming through, especially with the uh, Newtonian, really look nice. Just adding those little RGB stars just adds a nice little touch to this too. Because as I mentioned before, I am not a fan of SHO stars. And even just above too, there's like this really cool cluster of like three bright stars right next to each other inside of the nebulosity. So like I mentioned, I've done this target many times before, at least once a year, but I've never actually shoot very close up the elephant trunk. And given the uh, not so suitable conditions between some moonlight and the awful wildfire smoke, I'm happy with this image overall, and I'm hoping to continue to be uh, doing a lot more nebula processing and imaging here now that we're entering the summer months. Now, the Milky Way is into view 
we just hope we get some better conditions overall. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And I just happened to notice we've hit 3,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. I'll have, you know, links in the description for, you know, the equipment that I use. If this is something that interests you. And as well as the uh, playlist to monochrome imaging processing and all that other good stuff and be sure to check out my store at Alan Astro Prints as I do make a lot of accessories for you know astrophotography as far as you know star spikes and you know stuff for the sea star series down on Alan Astro Prints and as always clear skies thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video cheers <laughs>